Hey guys, welcome to Kick with Chase. Hope everyone's having a great day today. Uh, today we are making a dish I'm really excited about. Uh, it's trout, the cauliflower puree, um, the pan roasted potato, um, kind of like a little herb salad. Uh, it's Friday, so we're going fancy today. Um, so yeah, uh, grab a drink. Let's get cooking. Cheers, everyone. Back on the beer. It's Friday. Okay, so. Uh, today we are cooking some trout. Um, so first of all, I'm going to kind of go through what I'm looking for to fish and kind of how I process it and what I think about kind of how to cut it up very quickly. Um, we're going to be moving kind of quick today because it's, uh, I think, probably one of the more complicated dishes in terms of how many things we're doing. But that's okay because a lot of you have been following along for almost a month now, so our skills are on the rise. Uh, so this is Ontario Farmed Trout. Um, I am a huge fan of farmed trout. Um, so number one, our oceans are, are, you know, being fished very heavily. So farmed stuff is much more sustainable. And a lot of farms, especially in Ontario now are doing a really cool, they're, they're what they call hybrid farms. So they, the fish will live in the bottom of the farm and as a fish defecate poop, the, the fish fertilizer then feeds a hydroponic that is used as a fertilizer to grow hydroponic fruits and vegetables. Um, so it's this beautiful cycle of the fish kind of feed the plants and the plants then when some they get trimmed or anything, they then feed the fish. Um, it's not damaging to our rivers and our lakes because, you know, we want to keep those healthy and pristine for as long as we can. So don't be afraid of farm. People have this idea that wild is better. Especially taste-wise, like this is a farm trout, beautiful. You know, I would prefer this over salmon. Yeah. Is it a steelhead trout? Uh, not actually sure. Ty did our shopping this week, and like I didn't look at the package. I kind of opened it to get it out. Um, it might be a rainbow. It looks like a steelhead from the skin, but it might be a rainbow. It could be wrong. Either or. Great. You know, if you have wild, that that's fine as well. Um, but. Farms are good. Good for the planet, good for us, good for your tummy. It's all good. So, this is what I've uh, how it looks after I've broken it down. Now, these are, are what they would call like restaurant portions, right? So, it's taken out of the fattest part of the fish, you know. Um, you can see it's nice and even across there. It, it, it's even across there. So, what I'm cutting that for is just like we talked about when you're frying fish, this is so it cooks evenly. Um, so, I trimmed off the tail, the tail piece here. And I trimmed off the belly. Um, so I could kind of rebuild this fish, but I think you guys know what it looks like. I took those pieces off because they're much thinner. They won't cook at the same rate. Um, the belly has a lot more fat. There and is so thin, right? When you look at that piece, when you look at this piece, like, sorry, there's no way those are cooking evenly, right? But I'm not going to throw any of this away, obviously. So what I did and what we do in the restaurants a lot is I actually, this morning I, I portioned it out and then I just heavily salted it. Um, and about a couple hours later I came back, I rinsed these off and the salt is still sitting on this. So you see all this liquid at the bottom? That's because I, I cured it. Now you don't have to do this, I'm just letting you know what I did. Um, so I'll leave this cured overnight and then tomorrow I'll rinse it off and then you can just eat it like sushi. It's, it's basically cooked, it's like salmon gravlax or a cold smoked salmon exact same consistency and I'll just take the skin off and I'll put it in a salad with a little you know olive oil and whatever sesame oil or something um, or you could freeze it and use it in a pasta uh, you could cook it and then put it in the fridge and shred it like instead of a tuna fish sandwich you could have like a beautiful Ontario farm trout sandwich or a Alberta farm trout sandwich right if they have trout farms in Alberta eh, maybe um, and I'm just showing that because you know, we want to be cooking the best piece, but we're not going to waste anything, right? This is expensive. This fish cost us $15, um, so it's kind of a nice, it's a treat, especially during the pandemic. But we're getting two adults dinner out of it, and we're probably going to get another lunch or dinner. So it kind of still works out to three fifty dollars per person per meal, which isn't terrible. Um, so I just wanted to talk about that really briefly. So, just like the sausage video, if you guys saw that, when I'm doing these dishes at home, I've got a lot of pans on the go. I've got three pans kind of preheating over here. I'm trying to do things, get things going that I don't have to worry about. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just get uh, my, not my trout on, I'm going to put this aside for a second. Uh, we're going to start working on our cauliflower puree. So I've just got two cups of cauliflower, very thinly sliced. And I'm not worrying about washing my hands right now because that trout is cured. It's cooked, basically. Like, it, the salt has extracted any of it. It's also, like, killed the bacteria and stuff on the outside. It's very, very safe. It's actually better for your, easier for your body to digest uh, trout like that or fish in general. Um, and even, just total random side note, in sushi restaurants, they always cure for at least 30 minutes salmon because um, you can't actually just cut raw salmon and eat it. It's, you can have parasites and bacteria. So they always sold cure it to make sure it's safe to consume. Uh, anyway, so cauliflower puree. So I've just thinly sliced two cups of cauliflower. And I've only thinly sliced it so it cooks quickly. Um, and then I've got two bay leaves and a clove of garlic. And this is just going to go into a pan with mixers in the way here. A touch of butter. Actually a touch of butter. Touch more butter and a little bit of oil. And I'm using those two fats. The butter is for flavor. Bay leaf flies out of the pan. Classic. Um, the butter is for flavor. The oil is to get get it cooking, right? So you can use those combinations of a nice flavored, you know, nice tasting fat, olive oil, and butter, with a heat conductor like canola oil. Right? Okay, so that's got some heat on it. I'm going to take some heavy cream. And we're going to get this in the pan. I'm going to add a touch of water. Don't use stock, use water, because we're trying to keep this as white as possible. So if stock has color to it, it would discolor from the pure, pure white that we're looking for. And I'm just going to simmer this. Just give it a little stir. And I'm just going to simmer this for about 10 minutes until the cauliflower is softened just completely, and then we're going to blitz it up. Okay, so we don't have to worry about our cauliflower anymore. That's kind of off out of our mind for 10 minutes. Moving on. Next stage, we're actually going to get our fish rock in here. So, um, I'm not going to add a lot of salt to these because I cured them for a couple hours. So some of that salt is already absorbed into it. Um, if you don't cure it, which most of you probably won't, uh, season heavier than I am right now. Again, remembering this is flaky rock salt, um, so it looks like I'm adding a lot more than I am. And whenever you're storing fish in the fridge, skin side up, you want that skin as dry as possible. Okay. We're going to cast iron pan, very low heat, right? We're going to cook this completely on the skin side, just like we were cooking those chicken thighs. So I'm just getting this. Jeez, that. When you let your pans preheat for 15 minutes, I tell you, the handles get hot there. They get real hot. Okay, so I've got just enough oil to cover the bottom. I'm not looking to pan fry, it's just to you know, keep it from sticking. Right? And see how gentle it wasn't this very, very soft, right? Because we don't want the skin to burn uh, before the fish cooks. Right? Can you talk again briefly about rinsing the cured salt off? Yeah, so I can actually do a piece right now. So this belly, because it's the thinnest, is probably already cured. So the salt has made all this liquid on the bottom. That's just the salt melting in with the juice from the fish, right? So you're losing weight as the liquid's coming out of the fish. So all I'm doing at this point is coming under cold water, giving a rinse, and then just initially, Take some paper towel, and uh, sorry, skin set down, just lay it down. Then pop it back in the fridge until it's dry, and then you can cut it up and use it for whatever. And so you did that with those fillets as well, you rinsed them. Yeah, but I, 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 so I put the cure on at about 10 this morning, and I rinsed them, I think, about one, just for a couple of hours. It just helps firm the flush up. Um, it also helps season deeply inside of the fish. And if you took this and you did, um, let's go ahead uh, like, like sh if you did sugar mixed with salt and sugar and some herbs and stuff and let it sit for a day or two, you'd have salmon crab legs, right? This is just a, a light version of that, almost treated like they would in a sushi restaurant. And it just helps with the texture of the meat, the flesh. Uh, and also just for me, it, it feels safer. Like, I, I like preserving fish with salt. That's a very natural kind of thing. Um, 
and it helps uh, with just the seasoning. Get the salt nice and deep in the fish. So yeah, but you can't really tell a difference, right? Like just by looking at it, but you can actually tell feeling it. This kind of, um, when you do it at home, you'll just kind of feel it. This feels very smooth now. Okay, so guys, complex dish. We've got purees going, we've got pan roasted fish going, we've got all kinds of stuff working here. And really, we have half of it working, right? Which is fantastic, you know? Our fish, we're gonna see it just like that chicken. And this is really what you want. Like, I'm just gonna not talk for a second. Perfect. So that gentle pop, that's how you know you're getting enough heat to cook it, but not enough heat to burn the skin. Same with this, ooh, ooh almost lost it there. Same with our cauliflower puree. We're not looking to, for a reduction. We're just looking to cook the cauliflower. Now, when we did this at the restaurant, we would take a parchment paper and cover this. Um, so we weren't reducing it at all. I just added a bit of water to counteract that reduction. Okay, so for our potatoes, I microwaved some potatoes. Um, so these are just russet potatoes that I microwaved until they were done. Uh, and I'm a big fan of microwave potatoes. It's the same thing as microwaving vegetables. You're not adding any liquid, right? So we're gonna be pan roasting these. So we can add salt, we can add fat, we can do all that thing to make them taste really good. Um, if you don't have a microwave, just roast them in the oven, boil them, use a different side of veg if you want. Uh, but I'd love to microwave these potatoes. I'm going to show you how to cook them. And a knife. Got to make sure it's kind of sharp because I want a really nice flat surface. You kind of look at this potato. And I, I, I want kind of some height to my plate, right? So I'm going to cut it down here. See why? I... The skin on these can be quite tough. There we go. And I'm looking for a very flat surface because I'm going to be searing those like that. Here. It's actually, I don't need this one. Cook the next one. And I think I overcooked this one because it's basically completely like hollow. I don't know what happened there. I'm pretending I don't need it, but I think I actually just might quit for too long. Um, okay, so our sauce is going here. Our fish is going here. Uh, I'm running a burner here. Uh, yeah, okay. okay, I'm gonna get a burner going in the back here. Get some oil. Good amount of fat in that. Right? Potatoes love fat. Try to heat slightly. So you can see that cooked fish is starting to creep up the side there, right? So I don't need to look at the skin. I have no, no requirement to look at it because the fish is telling me when it's cooked. You know, I'm just, watch, just like the chicken thighs. It's telling me when, when it's uh, ready to flip. Um, we're also gonna do a charred lemon with this, which looks beautiful on the plate. Um, it actually tastes kind of, uh, add some sweetness to it. It's a really beautiful thing. Um, so it's just a whole lemon. I'm just cutting it in half. There's some potato on it because I didn't wipe my knife. Okay, so. That was not nearly hot enough. I don't know why I even thought that would be hot. I just turned that off. Um, okay, well, while I let that heat up, um, we'll just kind of talk about this on the plate is gonna look really, really beautiful, very refined, right? Like I said, we've got purees, we've got all kinds of stuff going on, but there wasn't a lot of ingredients. And I think that's something that, you know, I was really surprised at when I went into kind of fine dining or working in really nice restaurants. You know, the plates looked like these crazy things that I could never imagine making. But when I actually broke down what was on them, it's like the best dishes are kind of seven things, right? It's just cooking them in an interesting way, really treating what you're cooking correctly, paying attention to all those little steps. Um, and that's what's gonna kinda get you that, that wow factor, right? So hopefully we've got enough heat in that now. I'm also gonna season these. Some salt. There we go. We're just going to cook, so these potatoes are cooked, right? They're baked potatoes or micro potatoes or whatever. Um, 
So we're just going to cook these on one side and get a really, really heavy char on them. All right, so you kind of get that nice contrast and texture between soft, creamy baked potato and really, really charred, almost hash brown. And then just a lemon face down. We're just going to kind of let that stuff go. Let it rock. So, hopefully this is getting close. Not as much. Are you okay? Ty is sacrificing her arms here, guys. I'm going to splatter with some oil. Turn that down. Cut. Maybe I should have started this puree before the video. Okay. Yeah, so I'm just going. If you taste the cream right now, it's hot. But it's starting to pull in that cauliflower taste. It tastes like the bay leaf, which we're going to pull out before we puree it. Starting to get that garlic in there. Um, I don't think I seasoned this at all, so I'm going to add a touch of salt. No pepper. We want to keep again. This is this is the base of our plate. We're going to be plating this on these black plates. So I, I really want just for aesthetic that pure pure white contrasting with that black. That's kind of what I'm going for here. And hopefully we'll see it. Yeah. Garnishes. If you can start to see that color, get on there. That's exactly what I'm looking for. I'm just gonna count, and then the lemon starting to char really nicely. So I want, I want way more color. Marley knows it's five o'clock, so she's barking away. Yeah. Just to show you guys kind of what's going on here. You can start to see how crispy that skin is getting, right? Yeah, very early on the process. But that's what this, having a nice dry um, skin does, right? The drier the skin, the crispier it's gonna be. It's just like cooking chicken. This, okay. Hopefully we're getting close to our puree here. Yeah, so we've got our next five videos planned out, um, but I would love hearing suggestions, guys. So, if you have anything you think about it over the weekend, um, shoot me a message on Instagram or comment on a YouTube video or anything like that. Um, yeah, we're gonna run out of ideas pretty soon here. So, no, not really. Yeah, this is getting close. Another minute or two. It's so hard in these, uh, when, you, when you're doing the show because it's like you run out of things to talk about. You just want to rush it. That's kind of like it's okay. Take a minute. I'd rather have this puree work out good than you know rush it and have it not be smooth or anything like that. Because that's what happens if you don't cook it through all the way. When you puree, it'll be really chunky and gritty, right? Because you're basically pureeing raw cauliflower at that point. So this has to be really, really well cooked. But you don't want to cook it too long because it starts to lose its color. So all I'm feeling for here is like, just like, no resistance when I'm pushing through, right? And I could have maybe cut it a little smaller to kind of rush it, but I also wanted to make sure you got good extraction from the bay leaf. Stuff like that. It's always a balance. Laurie says, have a drink, it's all good. And Dora says, sing for us. <laughs> Of course, Dora said, "Sing free." Yeah, uh, nothing, nothing, uh, nothing loses followers quickly than an acapella chase in the kitchen. <laughs> well, have a drink. Cheers, guys. Happy Friday. Laurel is doing uh, the fish and chips tonight for Ashley McQuinn. So I'm waiting to hear the results of that. I'm very excited. We I, I said this before, but we did uh, when we were camping with them. We did the fish and chips with the girls and. And it's you know, cooked for a lot of people in a lot of places, but nothing's more satisfying than cooking for your family something new and watching them just devour it, you know? Like, really, really enjoy something that you make for the people you like. It's It's been so hard just, you know, I get to cook for Tyler, right? But it's been so hard just being home and not being able to cook for people, because that's the thing that I do, right? But I think we're all, all kind of in that boat. 
Um, what if you didn't plan to eat the skin, yep. which would be an insane decision, they have admitted this, yep. would you still cook it skin on and then take it off? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because there's, so you think about a person, right? Um, like, not eating a person, but think about the way, when we, our fat is on the outside. So it's the same thing with the skin of the fish. So even if you're taking the skin off, that's where that layer of fat is, and that's going to give you tons of flavor. So you're still going to get the most flavor of this, and then you can just peel it off and serve it that way, if you so wanted to, but, you know, eat the skin. It's good for you. Okay, we are so close here, guys. I keep turning up the temperature higher than I should. Just keep off, yeah. Just checking our potatoes. Yeah, I'm going darker than that. I want... Because you got to think there's only, um, you're only getting one little bit of, of the potato. Oh, yeah. Lemon's looking beautiful, right? I'm going darker. We're not afraid of color here. We're not afraid of caramelization. we got no fear. Okay. Got a re huh? request for a good slaw recipe. You got it. Which I know you've got one, oh, so... Yeah. We are a cabbage eating household here. We'll add that to the list That's for Kim Douglas. Kim Douglas? You got it, Kim. <laughs> okay. This, uh, this, because I turned my heat up, because I'm all like, don't know what to talk about, because I'm waiting for my food. I didn't time it out very well this week. Uh, I reduced my cream too much. So I'm just going to test more cream. Because that's where we're at. All right. Just going to bring this up. Hopefully it'll be done. Let me puree. Okay, so while that's kind of coming up, I'll show you off the garnishes for the other side. Okay, so this is the rest of the garnish for the dish. Um, parsley, got some pickled onions, some radish, some mint, because that's what I have in my fridge. So you'll be seeing a lot of that until we go to the grocery store next week. And just briefly while we're kind of going over this. Oh, that one's getting good. You smell that caramelized lemon. Delicious. Okay, so I talked about this for storing herbs. So we bought these herbs five days ago now. And we've got recipes coming up next week for the spring onions. So they are completely, got a bunch of parsley here. Damp paper towel is still wet. I haven't re wet it. Spring onions, gorgeous. Everything's completely fresh. So this is on track to last us our full 14 days between our grocery shops. And we're going to have fresh herbs in the fridge the entire time. So I cannot recommend enough if you guys are. Or, you know, want to stay fresh, and especially as it gets warmer and, you know, summertime comes. Um, unless you have a garden or a windowsill garden. This has been such a fantastic way to store herbs at home. And same thing with the parsley. This is cut. I picked this five days ago. And it's still perfect. Okay. pull the potatoes they're done I'm just gonna pull them off and leave them in the pan because the pan will keep them warm as everything else is cooking right this cauliflower is ready to puree I hope. oh yeah yeah absolutely okay. so just take the bay leaves out just discard them bay leaves are actually like to eat are not super good for us. They, we, we don't digest them super well. Spatula, because this is all cream and cauliflower. Waste not, want not. Get this into your blender, food processor, blender ideally. saucepan because I'm gonna this is what I'm gonna hold it in and you can see just how white that stage so that's your goal right 
get it on there. Gonna get some temperature. Some heat, not some temperature. So you can see it's super smooth, right? Um, it just tastes gorgeous because it's so much cream and, and butter, right? But also like really nice cauliflower, right? That nice like deep, uh, not roasted, but like just it's been cooked out so much that you know how kind of like raw broccoli and cauliflower have that like kind of farty taste to them, right? When you cook them out for a really long time, it's gotten rid of that. So now it's just that like pure cauliflower, that really really nice cream, that butter. Um, it needs a touch of salt on there. I wasn't worried about correcting the seasoning until it was in the pot because we're going to reduce it slightly. So that's okay. And again, this is like kind of like the risotto in the sense that you don't you don't want it too thick here because by the time it hits your plate and sits, it will become like way too thick, right? So this is as hot as it's going to be and this should kind of be at its maximum thinness. Does that make sense? Is that clear? Like. This is as loose as it's ever going to be, so if it's close to where you want it here, it will probably be perfect on the plate. So Okay, so our trout is cooking really nice here. Um, oh, that's what happened. I turned off the burner back, so shucks. Okay. Uh, our trout is fairly close. It's about 30, you know, 30% left, thereabouts. Um, and you know, I like a little bit of pink still to mine. If you want to go all the way, all like cook it all the way through, that's totally fine. But I'm actually there's still quite a bit of heat in the pan. Just gonna check on the skin. Oh yeah. Oh dude. I'm just gonna get. Oh, and you can see how delicate it is. Because I turned the pan off, the skin lost its crisp. So I'm just gonna get some crisp back in the pan when I get some heat in there, and then I'm gonna flip it, and then the heat from the pan will finish cooking it. Just like the chicken thighs, you kind of go to. 80%, 90%, then the residual peat in your pan will finish cooking it from the bottom. So, we're going to kind of start thinking about going to plate here. Okay, see how dark those are? Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. So, we're doing two portions tonight. It's me and Tiger having dinner. So I kept this one whole so it kept its shape. And now you're going to cut it so you get this gorgeous contrast between that charred and that um, uh, uncharred side, right? That's how you get that really crisp line. You char everything and then slice it. And these guys, what I want to do, if this works, yeah, perfect, is I want to tear them. So what I'm looking for is to kind of mimic, see I'm mimicking that charred and that uncharred shape in the potatoes, right? But they've captured that really nice texture. So I'm just kind of pulling them aside in the middle and you end up with these really cool kind of like raw potato, cooked potato shapes. I can hear my trout getting really close. And this as well. We've opened something up, just going to season it slightly there with a bit of salt. Oh, that's beautiful. I lost a piece. Perfect. Okay. That's real nice. So, okay, we are good to go to play here. Got our puree. Got our trout, everything's kind of just sitting here. Turn everything off. Let's place this up here, guys. Have a drink. That was a stressful one for me. A lot of stuff going on. Okay. So, black plate. Got a puree here, just give it a nice mix. Make sure everything's nice and smooth. I'm going just off center. Generous with this. It's our nice, it's our sauce, right? There. Yeah. I'm actually gonna grab a spatula. That's why I don't want that. Okay. 
beautiful trout. Comes off to the side. Okay. We start building this with our potatoes in our puree. Take our lemon. Toss it in there. How thick is the puree? Would it be holding a line on the spoon? Oh, I love you guys. Look at you. Thicker than your, uh, um, thicker than the uh, batter for fried fish. Okay. And then we've got some beautiful garniture. Ooh, did I overseas my puree? Did I overseas my puree? delicious. Okay, so then we've got our beautiful garnishes here. This is obviously for the plate that I'll do after for me. Tyler always gets the pretty one. You guys, it's Friday. I'm going tweezers here. Also, here we go. Here we go, Josh, if you're watching. I'm spraying my herbs with vinegar. So what they do in really fancy restaurants is they get spray bottles. They spray from really high with vinegar because they don't want to dress them because then the shape would diminish. It's all very boozy. So Ty's parents got us these spritzers for olive oil. Never thought they'd be using them for this. It's actually McKenzie. Oh, McKenzie. Hey, McKenzie, if you're watching, thank you. Oh, God. Oh, God. A little wave ski. We're gonna start building a little. So what I'm kind of doing is kind of building a little salad here, right? It's a texture, you know. It's color, excited. You can tell. My tweezers. We're going tweezers here, guys. It's Friday. Nice pickled onion rings. The pink, just real nice on the plate. Yeah, and then our lightly dressed mint leaves here. Kind of just finding little homes for them. It's like Bob Ross, you know, he's like, like oh, just find a happy little spot for your happy little bush. We're doing that with the herbs, right? And this is just parsley, and I think parsley is one of the most underrated um, uh, herbs. You know, I, I think it's like so nice and fresh and vibrant and salad. We go through it a ton. It's so healthy for you. There, drop some in there. Okay guys, that's about as far as I would go with that. I'm just gonna give my plate a little wipe. I know this was a bit of a longer video. Oh, still 32 minutes. Yeah, tell you, getting that half hour dialed in. Um, Normally I'd be taking my time kind of cleaning up a little bit better as I went along. Right there. Plate. Marley's still losing her mind. She must be hungry for her dinner too. I guess. It's a pretty nice looking trout dish. So just, you know, to kind of ref go over this whole process again, right? That's what I would be playing towards the person. This, this puree can be squash, broccoli, cauliflower, it could be, um, you know, a really rich potato puree, right? Think about potato puree instead of a soup. Um, the trout, all in the skin, so you're not thinking about it when you're cooking everything else, right? These potatoes, they were in the microwave, right? So I, you microwave them, you sear it heavily on one side, you get this really beautiful, fancy, hash brown, home fry, whatever you want to call it, you know? Have some herbs in your fridge, throw them on top, and all of a sudden you got something that looks like a million bucks, and you know, really 350 worth of protein, thereabouts. So potatoes and cauliflower, 